when I was a young priest just out of seminary, I lived with a jazz band in Asheville, North Carolina, led by a really excellent piano player and the trio that went with him. They traveled all over the country and mostly to colleges and to churches and played for youth groups in churches where they'd sometimes have crowds of 500 to 1,000 kids. So on one weekend after I moved into the house, they were away at a playing at a big church in Georgia. And as they got set up that evening to play, uh, Howard started with one of his piano solos. And all of a sudden he noticed that all the kids were looking behind him at something that was going on up in the altar area of the church. And so finally, he, as he was playing, he turned around and looked. And lo and behold, the guitar player, Rick, was crawling across the sanctuary like he was a lion in a cage uh, up against the bars of the, of the rail in the sanctuary. So that's just a funny moment that I wanted to recreate for you today to start our worship service and thinking about how we all feel locked in. We all feel so restrained and restricted by everything that's going on. Made me think of that little story and, and how that symbolized all those kids that even in a church, in a place that they considered probably safe and a place that had been important in their upbringing, you could feel sometimes hemmed in and, and imprisoned as Rick so humorously carried out by crawling across the, the sanctuary while Howard was playing his song. So, so as we begin our worship tonight, I want you to think about what I've been reflecting on today, which is uh, this wonderful, beautiful outdoors in the place that we live in Maine, in such a wonderful state, and, and also about how healing comes often from the time that we spend in nature. And so if there's a theme of this worship tonight, my theme would be loving nature and loving trees, particularly. So we'll begin with an old song that has to do with that very notion based on a poem called Trees. Oh 
a bit of silence with our bell to begin our reflections this evening. Okay, back inside my house. I hope you enjoyed that little reflection about trees and the importance of our relationship with nature. So we begin our prayers for this evening in our evening worship and Compline service with the following prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace now unfold us, all who are dear to us and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look to a new day, new joys and new possibilities. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. And now let us pray a prayer for direction. Holy Lord, giver of all wisdom, set for us this night the banquet of your word. Invite us to feast on the genius and beauty all around us. Then turn again, turn again us in humility toward the poor, the oppressed, and the weak. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, who is wisdom forever and ever. Amen. As we remember the need for stillness and peace, think again of the power of the natural world around us, especially the trees. Think of their strength, the power of being sometimes hundreds of years old, their majesty, their deep roots, their silence until stirred by the winds of the Spirit. Think of all they represent for our lives for the shelter which they make and offer us. Hear now the words of wisdom from our Indian brothers and sisters. Being born as humans to this earth is a very sacred trust. We have a sacred responsibility because of the special gift we have, which is beyond the fine gifts of plant life, the fish, the woodlands, the birds, and all the other living things on earth. We are able to take care of them. Those words were written by Audrey Shenandoah of the Onondaga tribe in the 1980s. And a second thought, why will you take from us by force what you can obtain by love? Why will you destroy us who supply you with food? What can you get by war? We are unarmed and willing to give you what you ask if you come in a friendly manner. I am not so simple as to not know if it is better to eat good meat, sleep comfortably, live quietly with my women and the children, laugh and be merry with the English people and being their friend, trade for their copper and hatchets, rather than to run away from them. Take away your guns and swords, the cause of all our jealousy, or you may die in the same manner. The words of Walhanukuk, a Powhatan chief in the Confederacy of Virginia in the year 1609. Again, our bell gives us a chance for a moment of silence.
Now we resume our prayers. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Take a pause here for the singing of a hymn, which is one of my favorites for the evening. Now the day is over, number 42. And our scripture reading for tonight comes to us from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, beginning with verse 26. And Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, and then the head, and then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. And yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air might make nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. We continue in our service tonight with a different form of the Compline prayers it's from a different order of Celtic Compline designed for Monday nights but can be used anytime. O Christ, Son of the living God, may your holy angels guard our sleep. May they watch over us as we rest and hover around our heads. Let them reveal to us in our dreams visions of your glorious truth, O High Prince of the Universe, O High Priest of the Mysteries. May no dreams disturb our rest, and no nightmares darken our dreams. May no fears or worries delay our willing, prompt response. Repose. May no fears or worries delay our willing, prompt repose. 
May the virtue of our daily work hallow our nightly prayers. May our sleep be deep and soft, so our work will be fresh and hard. I will lie down and sleep in peace, and you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. My dear ones, O God, bless. Bless thou and keep them in every place where they are. Into your hands I commit my spirit. I give it to you with all the love in my heart. How precious to me you are, and your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would be outnumber. They would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. I make the cross of Christ upon my breast, over the tablet of my hard heart, and I beseech the living God of the universe, may the light of lights come to my dark heart from thy place. May the Spirit's wisdom come to my heart's tablet from my Savior. Christ without sin, Christ of wounds, I am placing my soul and my body under thy guarding this night. Christ of the poor, Christ of tears, thy cross be my shielding this night. O thou son of tears, and of wounds, and of the piercing. I am going now into the sleep. O be it, in thy dear arms keep. O God of grace, that I might awake once again. My Christ, my Christ, my shield and my encircler. Each day, each night, each light, each dark. My Christ, my Christ, my shield, my encircler each day and each night, each light and each dark. Be near me, uphold me, my treasure and my triumph. Circle me, Lord, keep protection near and danger far. Circle me, Lord, keep light near and darkness far. Circle me, Lord, keep peace within and keep evil out. The peace of all peace be mine this night. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now a special prayer, a prayer for our church, inspired by the words of Dr. Martin Luther King.
And finally, we conclude our prayers and our time together this night with the following response. O Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come unto you. Let us pray. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this life may rest in your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, you have called us to serve you. Grant that we may walk in your presence, your love in our hearts, your truth in our minds, your strength in our wills, until at the end of our journey, we know the joy of our homecoming and of your peace. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. The Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us this night and always. Amen. So let us go forth now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night. Have a good rest.